I am Consciously Curious, a podcast for those that are searching for a career or cultivating meaning within their own space. We've had anesthesia providers to barbers, dog behaviors to airline pilots, white collar to blue collar, entrepreneurs to passion projects. Life's too short to not produce meaningful work. Join me, Victor Chan, as we deep dive within various industries. I'd love to hear your feedback, so feel free to leave a comment. I hope you find some value within these conversations, but more importantly, I hope it sparks a meaning within your own space. Our next guest has had several iterations on his way to realizing his dream. He's created a space that overlaps retail, fashion, hair, and networking. Whether it be working at his family's carnitas restaurant or cutting hair, hospitality and gratitude are at the forefront of Blankness Studios. Gratitude for this blank canvas that we get to create art with every day. Please enjoy my conversation with Sergio Torres. We are supported by Remember, that's R-M-B-R, a Chicago kombucha that's changing the social beverage game. I absolutely love their tagline, Real Memories, Better Rituals. Guys, I am currently in my booch era. And I noticed that as I was winding down the other night, I was reaching for a can of Remember instead of a beer. Out of all the non-alcoholic beverages to choose from, Remember is my go-to whether I'm working or out in a social setting. It stays true to its roots as an unpasteurized, raw, and organic kombucha without any added sugars, juices, or additives. The vibrant and unique colors of each flavor mirror the rich diversity within each can. You can find them in various bodegas and stores around the city, as well as on their website, drinkremember.com. That's D-R-I-N-K-R-M-B-R.com. Cheers. We're live. Cool. This is Sergio Torres. What's going on, man? Welcome to the shop. Appreciate you coming. Uh... Th- thanks for the call. Thanks for reaching out. And, yeah. and after... Um, after chatting for a little bit, I, I'm impressed. I, I'm curious. Um, I'm excited to see where we go. You, you got your fingers in a little of everything. Uh, when yep. I say everything, like various industries. Correct. Um, and it wasn't always that way. Um, so to, to give people some, some perspective, you're in the food and beverage hospitality industry. You're in the hair uh, industry. Yep. You're, um, you're in the uh, merch industry, um, streetwear industry, and and from your bio, you're almost you're kind of in the donut industry as, yep, as well. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, for anything that I, I left out, um, how would you pitch yourself if you were meeting someone for the first time? Oh man, you know what? It just um, I'm a big person on you know following my dreams. Yeah. So at the at the at the beginning of any conversation, it's it's very. Um, I guess if you would say, if you were to tell me, like, what do you do for a living? I it's just, hard, right? Yeah. It, it, it depends on who you're talking to. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and my, my, my main answer is I do what I love, right? Because mm, mm. at the end of the day, that's everything that I love doing is currently what's happening in my life right now, which is unbelievable because, you know, fat, you know behind like 10 years ago was completely opposite, right? Similar to every entrepreneur story, right? But um, it's right now I'm just I'm doing what I love to do mm-hmm. every single day, wake up and love what I'm doing. Regardless yeah, of any, we appreciate the variety. I yeah, think. yeah. Um, and not not being in one spot, not being tethered to a physical location. For sure. Um, I think that's the the hardest part. There's several hard parts for most people. I think, I think most people actually haven't planned the time or set the time to actually dream. Yeah. And when we say dream, I define it as as identifying your joys, like things that bring you joy, as well as if there's some overlap with things that bring you joy and things that you have a natural tendency Correct. towards. Yeah. Um, so most people are kind of just in a lull of like not just even floating. thinking about what they might really get fulfilled from. Yeah. But then the next step uh, after realizing that is, is putting a plan together and then putting that plan in action. But then we're off to the races. Yeah. It, it feels like a series of sprints um, after that. So... Um, now that we have a, a brief overview, um, before we go too deep into every industry, what um, what was the plan maybe 10 years ago? Uh, were you in a lull? Uh, were you in a different industry? Were you in a nine to five? Where, where did it all begin? Yeah, so 10 years ago, um, yeah, that's uh, around like 20, I was around like 23 or 20, okay. 23, 24. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I had just finished up school. 
I got an internship at a really cool um, civil engineering job in in, okay. in the West Loop. Okay. And you know those were that that was a dream, right? I was like, man, I want to work in the city. I'm from the suburbs, right? So okay. it's like I want to work in the city and you know have that whole vibe, right? The whole experience, that whole industry, like that. What what I, I haven't had a civil engineer on. Um, ironically, my brother's a civil engineer. Okay. But uh, bef- like bo- even before school or when you started school, if you were undecided, what aspects of si- specifically so, civil engineering yeah. um, appealed to you? Yeah. So look, that's, it's a the story about the civil engineering stuff was. Um, Ironically, it just it just happened on its own. Yeah. So I went to school for architecture originally. Okay. Right. So in high school, um, went to St. Joseph in Westchester. It's not it's not around no more, but I went okay. there and I just got I got drawn into drawing. Right. I've always been into drawing art. That drawing was all, what? It just mainly drawing. Look, dude. It, honestly, it, it was drawing cars. To oh, the, okay. To the point of like the spec on the car. I wow. knew exactly what it was on there. The detail on the on the on the wheels, the detail on the the fenders. So you could you, like I I foresee just from that little spiel yeah. like a designer for let's say Need for Speed Underground. Correct. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that. And then I would always draw houses. So my thing about okay. drawing houses was the clean line work on it. Okay. That's what drew me onto the architecture part of it, right? Okay. And um, but you know, before the ten years ago, so. I've always done hair since I was like 13 years old, right? Oh, okay. Yep. I, I, my brother would travel. We would travel to the city, and I would get haircuts over here. And, you know, from the suburbs to the city was, you know, not a bad drive. But, like, as a 13-year-old, you know, it's not a, it's not a weekly drive, right? There, someone's going to take me out here, right? Who, so, who was your plug to do hair at age 13, though? And I don't, I don't know his name anymore, but I know, he, probably has a, he probably has a barbershop around here. How did you get, get get connected though in the first place? So my brother's wife lived in the city. Okay. Yep. Lived okay. by over there by um by Roberto Clemente High School. Okay. And so you know we went. He's like his brother, my my sister in law's brother, had a plug for a barber in that city, and he's okay. like, oh, you know what? I got a really good barber, and um so went on there. It was called. Uh, I still don't know the name of the barber. It's called Hector's Barbershop. Okay. I think it was on Western, and I don't know. And, and so, did it did it start with like as a place to get a cut? Yeah. Okay. That's all it was. Oh, it was okay. just a haircut. I okay. got my first haircut. I fell in love instantly. I went back home and I just kept looking in the mirror. I was like, man, it just the line work on there and the fading and the gradient of the whole fade. Yeah. Drew me onto it. That's awesome. Since I already had a love for drawing, it just you know sparked that plug for it. Right? Yeah, I see it. I see it. Um, and then from there, you know, I just I went home. I did I I did I did go in consistently for like a few years I think. Yeah. But then I eventually was telling my mom to like take me to like Sally's and just get some clippers. Oh. Um ended up going to Sally's, got some clippers there. Um very supportive since the beginning of it, right? Mom, but yeah. yeah. And you know, went home and just, you know, started doing my own hair in the mirror. Okay. Right? So did that for about like a couple years on the drawing aspect of, you know, my regular drawing cars, trucks, houses. Just line work. It yeah. was literally just line work, man. It's weird, but what yeah. about tattooing? Not tattoo. I have zero tattoos. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a barber with zero tattoos, man. Yep. But that 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 art form didn't like. I I think of tattooing when you said line work. So yeah. it, it never yep. kind of dawned on you. It never dawned on me, man. Because you could be a tattoo list tattoo artist. Correct. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good uh, that's a good marketing scene on there. Oh, uh, so yes, yeah, so I did that. Um, you know, eventually just went into just doing my own hair and just, you know, butchering my hair up, man. Just the worst of the worst, right? And I was But you didn't give up. I did not give up. What what did you what was the self talk of like like did you see something that you liked every time, yes. like every iteration? Not not as fast as that pace. Okay. Because before it wasn't YouTube, no Instagram, none of that stuff, right? So I just needed to work on my own. So when I would go get a haircut, let's say I would go get a haircut on a Saturday morning, mm. right? I wouldn't go back maybe until two, three weeks later. Sure. So I would use that same kind of like guidelines of when I had the haircut and just go over it. Mm. So that's my, that's mm. my way of learning it. As it was growing. Exactly. So, that's the nice thing about hair. Yes. <laughs> so I started doing my hair like every, every third day, dude. Like consistently oh, every wow. three, you four days. You were always days. clean. Yes, <laughs> always clean, dude. And that's how like the reason why I didn't give up was I wanted that perfection of the haircut. Okay. I, was, I didn't want to give up on it. I was like, there was something drawing me to the attention of it, right? Yeah. And um, that just, obsession, yeah, dude. It, it became an obsession for like me wanting to just want more and more and more of it. Yeah. And um, 
you know, eventually just led into cutting my, you know, family members here, mm. you know, cousins here. And were they, still were at they this hesitant point, at first yeah, or they saw your skill? No, they're like, no, no, no. Very hesitant, dude. Okay. My skill did not come on until like later on. Oh. Like this was like, you know, I thought it was good at that point, but not confident enough. Okay. So my confidence was like down here. Okay. Right. And, you know, very barely, I'll say it like I had no confidence coming yeah. here. Right. You know, some people will say like, oh, I have the confidence. It wasn't like that for Fake me. Fake it till you make it. Yeah, man. None of that was there. <laughs> Um, and then eventually it just like, um, you know, I started getting a little bit better at it, went into high school and then in high school, I was still doing my own hair. Yeah. People were like, where do you get your hair cut at? I'm like, I do it myself. Not in a good way though. In a way of like, oh, why don't you cut it like this? Why are you cutting it like that? You know? And I was like, I don't know, man. I'm like, I just, this is, this is my thing. I like yeah. doing it. Right. And this is when everyone's talking about like, they want to go to college for like, you know, I don't know, marketing, business, or, you know, some type of degree like that. And my my whole point of, like, the degree point, I didn't really want that. But, you know, like, I graduated in 2009. Like, entrepreneurship was a thing, but it wasn't, like, a thing how it is right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's, like, my dreams were kind of, like, just on the down low of things, right? So okay. it's, like, um, you know, I've always loved doing hair, but my, you know, my parents... My dad, especially my dad and my mom were like, you, you got to go to school for some type of like degree, what, right? What did your parents do? Um, so we did, at that point we were doing, we were flipping houses. So we were doing what? real estate. So they were entrepreneurs. Yeah. So we were flipping houses. and But that's where I got a lot of the architecture type oh. background from that. Because I was like, it's going to make sense. Like, I like doing it right now. Like, you know, maybe I'll do the architecture and it'll work. It'll go hand in hand did, with it. Did they, I, I know they were very supportive, but did they... Um, I guess what opportunities did they provide for you to try to give you options? Oh, just keep going. Just keep going with the business. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, I mean, I'm sure you were around the house flipping stuff, but like, does any of that, did, did, did it appeal to you? Um, you know what, that, you know, going back at it, I do regret a little, you know, I don't regret it, but I do regret it. Right. But like before I didn't have that mentality of like me wanting to pursue such a big dream like that. Right. It was, it, it was always like that's my parents, my dad's dream mm, mm. or like my family's dream, but not my dream. Like it wasn't fulfilling me to pursue it at that point. Is it their dream or was it an opportunity that came into their purview? Uh, I think it was an opportunity, a little bit of both. Fine. Yeah. A little yeah. bit of opportunity. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, at that point I just, you know, I was like, all right, screw it. I'm going to go to, uh, I'll go to a two year sco- uh, school and just get my associates tra- and then see if I'll transfer to, um, That's a good plan. Yep. See if I'll transfer to IIT or Purdue, oh, right, for that second... For civil, to complete yeah, civil yeah. engineering. And so, did the arch- uh, originally registered as architecture, okay. right? And while at school, like, I was, I think, like, a year and a half down, and the program dropped. What? Yeah, man, it dropped, and I'm, I'm already, like, towards, like, transferring. Do they give you all your money back, or, like, what? No, so I had my credits. Okay. And they okay. were, like, you could transfer to, you know, IIT or Purdue, but you're still missing a few credits from here. So we can give you some transferable credits if you get into other classes, which was like construction management mm. or, um, you know, the engineering things. And I was like, ah, man, I'm like, I didn't like construction management, right? Mm. Because it was, it, was, mm. it was such a broad um, like term that I just didn't see myself kind of like in that field. So I was like, you know what, let me, let me try the, the engineering stuff. So when I'm getting that, the surveying certificate from that, mm. some credits from there, and, um, yeah, no, you know what? It, I stuck around for a few years more because of that same reason that my program dropped and I needed more credits. I didn't fall in love with architecture at that point. I dropped mm-hmm. it because I was like, you know what? It, maybe it's not for me. Right. So UAC fell, IIT fell, Purdue fell. And I'm just like, all right, what am I going to do here at, at school? You know, I'm still at this two year school, but I got a whole bunch of credits. So I'm, at this point I have like double the amount of credits that I need to even, I'm still there. <laughs> But the reason I was still there was a comfort zone, mm. right? My comfort zone at that school was, it's like I'm a super senior at some school, right? So mm. I'm like, you know, I already have that comfort there. I, I go there on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. There's a routine. The routine yeah. there, right? Yeah. While I'm still doing my family members, friends here, mm. that was my main mm. joy. So you see, so that was my main joy. The school was just me kind of just like accepting a point of like Maybe a safety parents. net. Or, yeah, yeah, that safety net, you yeah. know, and, making my parents happy, my family happy, right? you know, and then that's how that led into that. Um, I think I just, one, one day it was just like, a, you know, it was sparked into, I'm like, you know, I have to get like some type of internship mm. in this field. To really feel it out. Right, because I'm doing hair and 
I'm in the field of completely like not even close to the same industry, you know? And then, so at that point I kind of, um, I went into like, I got some internships, did a couple of them, um, didn't really fall in love with it no more. I did a lot of CAD work and it, mm. that's when I realized it wasn't for me, the CAD work and none of the architecture thing, right? Mm. The drawing on, onto things that like were not, didn't mean something to me. Sure. Um, so then I got, landed a job at um, that civil engineering spot in West Loop and instantly just like kind of fell in love with it. Hmm. It's the whole like, you know, again, the city, um, great opportunities there. What, what part of the work did you f- like, how was it different from the CAD work? Um, it was all field. It's all so field people. work. It was yeah, kind of people. Centric. It's like literally like field work on a daily basis, okay. office work, maybe 10%. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, the hours were six to 2 PM. And then did you actually, did you need an actual degree to actually get I did not. hired full time? Oh, I did not. That's okay. why that was a very like, I was like, I can't, I can't lose this opportunity right now. This is my door, my foot inside the it door, is. Yeah. you know, and they gave me an opportunity, you know, they knew my story on there and they were like, I'm like, look, I got an associates and I got a whole bunch of credits, you know, like, what can I do with that? And so they, you know, they got me a job. I got, I was in the field, uh, did that for like a few months. And then I got you know, that promoted to like a crew lead, mm. had my own crew, my own and, truck. And can you explain what, what does it mean to be in the field? Like what was the actual, so what were field was objectives? like, yep, we're doing like topographs on, on the whole city. So a lot of the work was like 95% in the city. So we're out there with like, I don't know if you guys have seen those like square cameras. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what do you actually so we're look taking, like? We're, what are you doing with those? So we're taking elevations and we're taking right aways of the property. Oh, yep. So if it's like, let's say we're surveying in like, on Michigan Avenue and buildings right there on the, on the, on the right of ways, like we're measuring to like the decimal of that, like precise location. And we're mapping out the whole area there. And who get the city gets that? Um, it's, you know, eventually the city does do the work for it. Yep. So it's like one of the first stages to like the pre-construction on there. I see. Yeah, I see. So when, when you see those people, they're, they're measuring things. Yep. Pre-construction. So there's something pre-construction about the construction or, Either they're pre-construction. Or, or every so often yeah. they, they re-update. Yep, exactly, okay, exactly. Okay. So wow, we did a lot of, yep, I did a lot in, the, um, mainly we did a lot of telecom, my sector of it. Mm. So everything fiber, you know, underneath, ground. I'm sure there's decent overhead. money in that. Yep, it was, no, it was, it was very good. Yeah, okay, okay. Good benefits, the whole, you know, the whole thing. It was, it was a, a job for like a person for sure to like, you know, kind of just grow I'm on I'm sure that. some, some aspects of that role bled into let's say designing a studio yep <laughs> that's so w- while i was there that's how um blankness came on to like a brand wow how the studio started eventually like years later right but like the studio the clothing brand the restaurant business all of that kind of like bred from that aspect of it oh interesting because i had so much time in the field that I love, I love sightseeing. I love seeing people like move around the whole thing. Right. So it's like, that's like my, like, um, that's it, it was like, yeah, it's my, it's my playground. Yeah. So I couldn't wait for the next day to go to work. Cause I knew I was going to be working on, you know, South Michigan Avenue, North Michigan Avenue, Gold Coast, mm. seeing the whole, like all these brands, all these people just going and brushing into stores mm-hmm. or driving, you know, this it's, it's an inspiration on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like, you know, but at that point, I'm just like locked into that job. Like I couldn't leave. There was no plans for me leaving anywhere. So there, there was there was time to dream, but not time to kind of work on your own. Like, yeah. were you still cutting hair, though? Maybe like, yeah, I was not doing, as often. Or, not as often. Yep, not okay. as often. I um I left it as like um kind of like a side 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 yeah. thing. And yeah. um, but I still like I still kept around with it. Um, a lot of my friends were like, they just end up going with someone else and. Yeah. T- tell me, like, so what was the turning point for you to make the switch from, like, the field work to... The field to, work to, like, entrepreneur. To, like, right? yeah, like, we, we never feel 100% ready, but, right. like, when did you feel ready enough? Yeah, so it was around... So I met my wife probably, and it was, like, not probably, but it's, like, I met her, like, in 2010, right? Mm-hmm. We dated, um, got a job, like, I think, like, two, three years later... That's when I got that internship and then I got to the civil engineering. And then um, I did that for like, I think it was like around like three and a half, four years. It's a long time. Yeah, I did it for a while, man. I did it for a while. And then my wife 
got pregnant with our first daughter mm. and she's pregnant and I'm just like kind of got hit with like reality of like it's not I, just you two anymore yeah or yeah. like do I really want to do this forever you know like kind of like an exit right meaning like life is going to change once yep. your child is here and this is my chance to kind of go all in on something that exactly I, it, okay yep so she's like six months pregnant and you know <laughs> it's only three months left yeah man <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was wild and I you know I still I still remember we were sitting in the hospital she was going to get an ultrasound and I tell her I'm like I'm like I don't know I think I want to you know call it quits at the engineering spot and she's like but well, what are you going to do you know like we talked about it but she never thought that it was going to be like a reality of it. Okay. She thought it was going to be just like you know small talk or eventually kind of thing or like maybe after the baby <laughs> you know after settling down. And I was like, I don't know, like, I don't know what I want to do, but I, like, I want to do something on my own. Yeah. Right. And, you know, my father, this is my, the restaurant comes into place. My father-in-law owned, uh, he owns a restaurant, a few mm-hmm. restaurants in, for Carnitas, Carnitas Don Alfredo. Mm-hmm. And so we, like, I had already talked to him before, like me talking to my wife mm. about the situations and he was on board with them, and, you know, of me going on board with them and like, kind of like helping out and, you know seeing the whole infrastructure of a business and you know how that role plays and stuff and i'm like i don't think i'm gonna go i didn't want to tell my wife right but i'm like i don't know i think i'm gonna go work at the restaurant with your dad and stuff and she's like oh i don't know about that <laughs> you know like i'm like why not she's like she didn't want to she didn't want to mix family with business and you know it made sense right but and i'm like i don't know i just like i feel like this is an opportunity for me to do something and like it's the perfect opportunity you know, and she's like, I don't, I don't, she's like, she was not agreeing with it, dude. Like, not agreeing with it. In what, what role? Like, would like you hold just, many roles in the restaurant, or like, what, what part? I mean, dude, it was, it was a known. It was definitely a known. Like, there was no structure for like me to like. He's mm-hmm. like, you're gonna do this, and that's it. Like, he's like, sir, you're gonna do this plus like a hundred other things, things at the same time, pretty much, right? Yeah. And I knew that. I just didn't tell my wife that at that time because mm-hmm. she's gonna be like, she, she was like. The whole point of it was she's like, you got a degree and you're working at an engineering spot and then you're going to go work at a restaurant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's I'm like, like, like lost, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I told her, I'm like, I'm like, I see your point, but it, it just sounds, it sounds worse than what you're saying right now. Okay. Cause I had a plan from that gecko of it in the beginning of it. I had the plan. She knew the plan, but she's, so you see my wife and me are complete opposites. She's not the entrepreneurial type, you know, and yeah. I'm definitely more of that. Mm-hmm. She's a more of like, you know, the structure she gets me back to neutral, right? I'm sure she's creative in other ways. Exactly. Yeah. No, definitely for sure. She has her own ways of it, which we help and bounce each other off ideas with that, right? So, you when, know. When you, when you said um, you had a plan from the get-go, yep. um, did that in t- like include using the restaurant as a launching pad to to cultivate your other side hustles? Um, like, is that is that the grand plan? Similar, to yep. Be, to be an entrepreneur? Yep. You, yep, that was that was a foundation for it. Mm-hmm. Definitely, that was the foundation. The foundation for it. But was and that like, was that too obscure to share at the moment? Yeah, no, dude, that was like you, I couldn't share that at the <laughs> moment. It was just gonna be like she's gonna be like, no, I don't know about this, right? And the baby, I didn't want to stress her out. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, you know, inside of me, it's kind of like, man, I don't know what I'm doing either. I had no idea. There's, what there's I was definitely doing some doing. aspect of like, oh, I don't want to jinx it. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to like exactly. I don't want to be all talk, right? <laughs> I don't want to just like sp- speak, like you know, share all these things, and and if it doesn't happen. And then I'm just all like talk, a whole right? Failure, so you're, right? you're yeah. going to, e- even with someone who you should be able to be the most vulnerable with. For sure. <laughs> no, for sure. That's, that's exactly how it went. But, you know. Um, yeah. How did it play out? So ended up just kind of like, um, so we're at the ultrasound, right? We're, this is, this all happened right there. We're ultrasound sitting down. She's right next to me. And, you know, I text my, actually I emailed my um, supervisor and I'm like, hey, Mike, you know, like. I think I'm going to call it quits, dude. I'm going to just give the two-week notice. You know, nothing bad against the company or anything like that. It's just, like, I'm going to do something else. And and he, like, um, he didn't reply back. But then he calls me, like, a few minutes later. And he's like, yo, sir, just want to call. Like, what's going on? Dude? Like, is everything okay? Because it was completely random, dude. It's a good boss. Yeah, completely random. Like, I was doing a job in Plainfield that was moving west that was going to be on there for, like, I don't know, 10 plus years or something like that. Right. And, you know, I was on there and he's like, I'm like, dude, it's nothing against anything, dude. I just like, I want to do something different. And they're like, well, what do you want to do? What are you going to do? Like, I'm, you're having a baby, you know, you're trying to look after me. Right. Mm. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm thinking I'm just going to go like, 
I said two things. I'm like, I'm either going to go to the restaurant or I'm going to go with my brother's company. So my brother has, he works at another civil engineering company. Oh, wow. That at that time, they were kind of like, um, my brother's company was like, they do a lot of cool projects. Like a lot of, they know them very well. And I was like, I kind of wanted to say that just to be like, no, Sergio has a plan, right? And so I, I ended up, <laughs> this is just young and like, you know, you're trying to like, I don't know why you would you want to impress other people, but like, that's how it yeah, was at that that's time, that's how we right? all are, yeah. Um, so I ended up just going there and just telling him that, saw him at work on Monday and he's like, dude, are you sure, you know, you want to do this? And I'm like, no, I'm 100% sure. I'm like, I'll give my, tr- I gave up my truck keys, my work truck keys, everything the following. He's like, I mean, you can stay like the two weeks or pay period already was like a weekend. So he's like, you can leave after the one week. I'm like, all right, I'll leave after the one week. So I turned everything in. I'm sitting in the office. At that point, I was transferred already to the Oak Brook office. So I was, I'm in the Oak Brook parking lot. And I'm like, all right, you know, going to hand my keys out. And kind of just like that moment was like a big turning point into reality of like, that's when it sunk in. Mm. I literally just quit my job. You know, nothing's coming in at this point. Right. So it's like, all right, what's next? Right. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm liking um, the emotions are going all over the place. Right. They're high emotions, low emotions. I don't know what to see, what to think about yeah. it. You know, all I know is that like, I go, I, you know, I it's, talk to- it's, it's a feeling of like relief. It's a feeling of motivation yeah. to like get going on your, on your own thing. But if, if the path is obscure and unknown, it's a very scary feeling. <laughs> it's a, it was a very scary feeling, yeah. you know? So I ended up just, um, talking to my father-in-law and just kind of uh, it's, like it's very cool that you have that type of relationship with him yeah no that's a it's a one of a kind man mm-hmm. super humble guy and then just like mm-hmm. very supportive of any type of decision you're you know not saying that you're gonna jump off a cliff even if it was jumping off a cliff if it's like a something safe you i bet you he'll support it for sure <laughs> you know like that type of relationship right and um you know he's like yeah let's just um come in on saturday so i quit on friday and he's like come in on saturday right and he's like at four in a, you know, like in the morning, yeah, four in the morning, it's carnitas, yep. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, cool. And then I'm like, damn, dude, that's when it really hit like reality of it. I'm like, how am I gonna do this? Because I was already at the, I was at the restaurant like just Saturday and Sundays mm. prior to that, oh. like a couple years prior to that. And so um, you, you've always been kind of helping yeah, out, I've always been helping out, not necessarily full time until then. Like, like I needed, I needed more than that, yeah, that wasn't fulfilling me enough, yeah. So I needed the full time thing for that, right? And I, um, I remember that night. It was like Friday night, and just like my heart's pounding because I'm like, man, I don't know what to expect tomorrow, you know. So ended up even though if I've already been there Saturday Sundays, right? But Saturday Sundays, kind of similar to what it was going on on a day on a weekend basis, swamp with people, mm. lots of work, you know, music playing, the whole like it's it's a fun experience. I I loved it. Yeah. Then the week came. The following week came, it's on Tuesday, so we were closed on Mondays before. Um, So on Tuesday was my beginning of the week. I got there on Tuesday, and um, I remember, right, I still remember, it's going to be like, (laughs) I'll show show my phone on the video of it, but I was just like, I was like, he told me, he's like, yeah, you know, Sergio, you got to, let's do this today. Mm. And I was like, oh, man, dude, this is like, I can't believe I quit my job to do something at the restaurant like this. He's like, he was telling me to like organize something in the back room. And kind of just like see things, what how like how things are gonna roll and play there like during the week because I've never been there during the week, mm. and I'm like it's a whole different restaurant during the week. You know what I mean? Like because sure. now that's when we got all the you know suppliers coming in or inventory to check all this stuff and sure, right sure. everything's going on in that during the week. And and I remember I told my I said to myself I'm like man I can't believe what I just got myself into. Was it? Um a humbling moment like was very it like humbling, because you dude. came from the big city and dude, now, very, now you're in a mexican joint right yeah so very humbling dude um I, I i you know as a young like an early 20 year old like you after especially experiencing big projects you're you're managing things and yeah. people um to now working and potentially in the back office or the a closet you know organizing things and cleaning yeah. things um there's that feeling of like i I'm, I should be doing more than this. Oh, that, that feeling was there, dude. I'm not going to sugarcoat and lie about it. That yeah. feeling was definitely there. Yeah. And it was just so humbling to, uh, like, the whole aspect of it, you know. And I don't know, dude. It was just, like, humbling. But at the same time, like, 
I would I wouldn't forget the original plan of what was gonna bring from that right mm. that experience right mm. and maybe at that point I didn't even know what type of experience I was gonna get because it was I didn't know at that point mm-hmm. so my you know then the baby was born and I'm there at the restaurant you know mm. and just kind of like I'm there you know time goes by a few months go by. And then kind of like, um, I want to say like about like a year later after me going on there full time, I started getting more into like, um, like anxiety, mm. right? And like a lot of like anxiety. From, from what? From another lull? Like you got, you're getting comfortable yeah. again or? It was, it wasn't the comfortable again. It was the me of not wanting to, not really like. Or not wanting to be where stuck. I was at. Okay. You know, I felt stuck. I felt like just like this is what's going to be for it, right? I'm like. I did already a jump to this yeah. and like me doing another jump. Sure. And this is what goes into like the entrepreneur. Like I it's like, don't get influenced by other per- people, what they say, even if you're not in the same industry, because like sometimes they don't know the correct terminology mm. or the correct way on to like, if I'm telling like, yeah, I don't think you should do it's that. It's hard dude. when it's family too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you should open that dude. I don't think you should like that type of, you yeah. know, well, I mean, people don't really understand what, what your dreams are exactly as, you know and, and they won't care as much as you do either yep exactly that's how i went with that and i got into anxiety depression the whole thing right which is um it was just like a whirlwind of emotions because mm-hmm. it was like i wanted to do something but like i'm like how do i do it now because mm-hmm. now i have a newborn baby mortgage mm-hmm. you know everything now and, and, and then a job where i'm at right now full time so it's like i couldn't really do anything right so my whole like I mean, the hours were very, very good, very flexible. But at the same time, though, I would go home and just like tired, exhausted, you're physically exhausted, exhausted. dude. Like I didn't want to do anything. Yeah, you know, and went on that like that for like I think it was like four years, man. Wow. Yeah, dude, it was like it was definitely deep. So not even time to dream. No time to dream, dude. (laughs) There's always something to do at the family business. (laughs) Yeah, dude. No time to like do any of that. Like just mental health wasn't really there, right? And um, eventually, just started to think a little more uh, differently with things and, um, you know, got into more of like uh, mindfulness. Mm-hmm. Um, I practiced that a lot and that got me really into what, more. What were you exposed to? Like a, like an app, like the app Calm or was it certain people that were speaking of mental wellness? Yeah, so and- it was, I got the Calm app. I did get the app. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I liked it. I mean, it, I thought it was it was pretty good. I think I was fairly good but i guess um, like who who or what put you on to um, yeah so it was one of my th- like it, prioritizing it was my your... therapist oh okay yeah okay it was my therapist so i did therapy for like a long time for that reason of anxiety and depression. was there was there any hesitation to start therapy oh definitely man and and wh- when did you feel like i like like the ex- you needed it rather than you would have liked to have it um man if the earliest about it because i've always had anxiety i've always had anxiety since i was a kid sure. i've always been the shy kid with not wanting to talk or like me doing this right now would have never happened sure dude. if you can you can go tell my family friends and like they'll tell you like i can't believe you is on there <laughs> i didn't tell anyone about it <laughs> so that's how i'm telling like that's how much i had in, the anxiety and the you know the low confidence all of that right so it's like um said so i had my first daughter right and then that's when I kind of realized and it hit me of like, I, like I want to get more, I want to think differently, mm. right? And so, you know, I wanted an alternative to just a typical, you know, coping skills. So that's when I, you know, I eventually went into therapy and one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. What were some, uh, some helpful coping mechanisms to like when you find yourself in a state of anxiety that, yeah. that really helped? Um, to this day right now, it's like the senses, so touch, feel, smell, like like see. just thinking about. Yeah. So like, what am I? What am I feeling right now? Yep. What a, like? What am I smelling? What oh. am I seeing? What am I hearing? That usually that takes me out of that anxiety. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, dude. That was one Very of the nice. biggest one of the biggest things to like see that, and then while being mindful, you stay in present moment. So I don't I don't think about the anxiety of me going to the podcast today. Mm. I don't think about the anxiety of what happened 10 years ago. So I wonder if the therapist um, starts with reactive kind of antidotes um, to things that people experience. And then eventually, if you spend enough time, go into how to analyze or how to be proactive um, with your issues. So like taking yourself out of situations that cause anxiety, if you can help it. Is that that a conversation at all? Yeah. Yeah. 
Like, so then over time, have you realized like you don't get an- as, in- as anxious? That's exactly what it is. Oh, interesting. Yep. Um, so I guess over time, has it been ex- like putting yourself in more stressful situations that have helped you become calmer over time? So yes and no, right? So it's like the yes of it is definitely getting out of the comfort zone mm-hmm. because then the next time you do it, it's not going to be as like, yeah, you know, it's it's just like a daily thing, right? But at the same time, I, you don't want to provoke yourself into doing things that are like... At least unnecessary. Right, right? unnecessary things, yeah. right? So it's like, um, so that was, a, that was a big thing for me though. But a lot of times though is that like anxiety for me worked in so many ways to help me to where I'm at right now and get me out of the anxiety, right? So a lot of times like myself, I hated the anxiety, right? I, I hated it. Like it was one of the like things that I could never get rid of, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, um, it's almost like preventing me from doing anything in life mm-hmm. um, to the point of now, like it's not really that I'm thinking the anxiety, but like- Maybe it's your perspective has switched on anxiety. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it did. It mm-hmm. switched on it. So for me, like, you know, the anxiety of it, it, it's just like a, like a regular thing, right? I don't, I don't see it as like, oh my God, the anxiety for it, it's going to be some, I don't know how I'll be able to do it, right? Because I've been there in so many situations and it's so tough. Mm. It's so tough to get out of it. So my perspective on it changed and now like the anxiety fuels me to like it's do a, the podcast. It's, it's kind of like a sign, yeah. right? It's like, yeah. okay, I'm doing something a little uncomfortable. Exactly. Uh, I, I should, I should more, more likely than not do it. <laughs> yep. The reward on it, on a good thing, it's like, like you're just you're walking out like if you got a runner's high mm, like that's how mm, good it feels because you just you just beat your anxiety mm, right so that's mm, how i see it on that mm. um so tell me about the if there was a transition like if you had to leave like the restaurant for a little bit um did you leave at all did you leave completely um in order to kind of start a new thing so okay so the restaurant i did the restaurant and then while i was there like a few years into it, like maybe like three, four years into it, I started more, um, you know, having more time to like really think about my future on mm. what I wanted to do. Right. Mm. Um, and then it just led into more of my create. That's when my creative side came back onto it. And I wanted to do some type of business structure that was e-commerce based, mm. not a storefront because I was still at the restaurant. I didn't want to, you know, I, I couldn't leave the restaurant. Yeah. At that point. Um, what like I, for me because this podcast started as like an ecom thing okay. too, um, and when you when one starts to build a brand, um, after your friends and family support you, and if no strangers are supporting you, how do you build that brand? Which is how the podcast was kind of started. Oh, it's tough, dude. It, yeah, yeah, very tough. Um, and so, what aspect of e-commerce uh, initially appealed to you? Because I definitely had a phase of like exploring different. Um, aspects of like passive income yep right so my main one was freedom yeah which is not freedom at all right but it, <laughs> it was i thought it was freedom right right, right you know but right. then it just realized that it was kind of like the opposite of it now i'm on the clock all day night kind of thing yeah um so that was one of my main things of like i want to jump into e-commerce and um so made me jump into it i did a couple of other businesses that i did on e-commerce that i never never left the table yeah so i guess some of the early e-com um businesses is it more um like amazon fba is it like making your own merch is it cut and sew or yeah. just direct so, to garment printing like what what were you doing so at the, time? the main the first one was a um first one was a cbd business mm. that i never left even like it just got registered and then like i was like all right, I can't do this. It was like way too much out of my reach. Sure. It was just like- There's a, a lot of like hoops you got to jump through? Um, Not necessarily the hoops. It was the experience part of it. So mm-hmm. I didn't have any type of business experience in that type of field at all. Oh. And it wasn't something that I was truly, I was passionate about it, but not necessarily to the point of like me doing it consistently Yeah. and me having to like, I needed it, that needed my time all, all the time. Yeah. So I- There's, I, you a, know, there's a learning curve. Right? Yeah. Close that. I'm like, all right, that's done. And then hit back into like the drawing board pretty much, right? And the drawing board was a point of like, I had ideas already kind of like in my mind of it. Mm. That was one of them. The second one was clothing. Mm. The clothing one was came before the CBD business mm. because the clothing one came as like, 
it came in from the architecture of me drawing and mm -hmm. doing line work and stuff like that. So that came in like 2016, 2015, just like mm. sketches, getting it printed at your local shop, mm -hmm. um, you know, and just... And just put like, you, did you have a website at the time? No, no website. It was no okay. website, um, no Instagram handle, nothing like that at all. It was just pretty much just me exp expressing my creativity with it. Like that's yeah. all I wanted. I mean, me. I mean, these days, um, a lot of those, the, those same like direct to garment printers can host design like personal designs from artists. Yeah. Right. But like, I guess was anyone, where did you display these designs if you were trying to sell them? So in the beginning there, I was not trying to sell them. So oh. in the beginning it was just me wearing them. Oh yeah. What kind of designs did you put on these? So it was a lot of like, like abstract shapes, okay. a lot of different line work. Like it goes back into thicknesses and stuff. Then from there, it just became into like more a, of a word type of like typographic, you know, like that's it. Okay. So those were the original designs of it. And then I kind of just like, not necessarily that I lost interest in it. I lost interest in that type of aspect of what was being printed on there, mm. the design aspect of it. I needed something more different than that, something more, um, a little bit more unique on it. So, um, Yep, a lot of more, like, definitely on the drawing board. I was, man, dude, it took, like, a couple of years from that point on. Like, it was so slow. Because I wasn't doing it full-time. I was still at the restaurant at that time. Yeah. And then with the baby at the house. Well, I guess, you know, what, what else were you exploring to kind of push and elevate the brand? Yeah, man. I mean, at that point, I wanted to, I wanted to like, bring the brand into, like, more of a cut and sew kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I never accepted Which is the, another learning curve. Yeah, dude. I never accepted, like, me buying you know, bulk wholesale and just putting, you know, just printing something on there. Like I hated that idea. Yeah. I hated it so much because it's just like, I didn't want that for my type of brand. Sure. You know? And, um, I think before, I mean, there wasn't really that, you know, going back at it, I should have opened an Instagram handle before at that mm -hmm. time. Right. Because it wasn't really as like, you know, populated like sure, now. Sure. Right. And another thing that I'm like, that's, I'm like, dude, it's like, Zero, you got to have zero regrets with things, right? You got to just go out there and do it. Just keep going. Yep. So years pass by, probably like around like 2018, I get back into it. I got Adobe on my computer. You know, now I'm a little bit more legit with it right now. I have more of like, I, I have my time to sketch things out, transfer them to Illustrator. And then from there, kind of get into like a, a better print shop, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Better garments, better all everything on there. Um, then I get some stuff printed on there. And I love it. I got my first drop was a brown hoodie and a black hoodie and two color tees. And those were all pigment pigmented um, garments. So it's like, you know, the vintage watch type, really mm -hmm. soft feel. Mm -hmm. um, I got a lot of those overseas mm. from like um, like different countries in Europe and stuff. Okay. And and it they were man, they were, they were so good. I, I love them. I. I regret not having a couple of them, but I still have a couple of them in more of like not my size. So um, any designs on them or it was simply because I get ads on Instagram for yeah. high quality blanks. Yeah, there was designs on it. OK, so I put I put my design. The, the design right here was Blaine as CEO. So the, the brand was established. Yep. The brand was established what, at that point. What um, inspired the name? Uh, so blankness came. It's it's literally the opposite of what it means. Right. Blankness is a lack of ideas lack of everything and i'm like i want the opposite of what the name means for the brand okay <laughs> and i'm like blingness you know what i mean like i'm like that's the complete opposite of who i am yeah you know it's a lack of ideas but at the same time it's a it's a blank slate every single day if anything that that's what i think right of. it's just kind of that blank slate yeah. a fresh start fresh start right? dude yeah and you know coming back from everything that i went before that i was like fresh start i'm like dude i gotta do, i gotta do this name yeah so i've got the i got the handle on there and um you know, did the whole thing, kind of just like, you know, registered the name, everything like that. Um, and then just ordered my first, you know, garments, yeah. got that, printed them on there. And then from there, kind of just like, you know, like, all right, let me get the marketing get thing going on. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, it, dude, it was the beginning of it. Like, I don't know if I got some pictures on there, but so I switched Instagram handles to like Blaine Studios now because of the mm -hmm. studio. But Blaine CEO has the original pictures of it and dude it was just like it's like humbling man well um, it's and, cool it's that like, you keep it up there yeah right? dude i love i love going back on there and just mm -hmm. checking up on things like that right and so put them on online 
And that was a whole process, man, because like I'm trying to learn code, you know, create my own website on there. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then photography. Yeah. And, photo- yeah. Dude, I was going to sleep like at if I was sleeping yeah. daily basis. I'm in the garage taking taking photography of all of these products at like two in the morning mm-hmm. and then going to work at the restaurant the next day mm-hmm. and then trying to like I'm like I hit a point. So were of, you still full time at the yeah, restaurant? Yeah, dude, full time. Yeah, I was still there full time. Oh, wow. So at that point, I'm with like, baby, I got yeah, with the baby, dude, <laughs> with the baby. And, um, you know, we're there at the house and I'm like just taking pictures, coming in the house, getting more products, ironing them, you know, and before I even launch anything. Yeah. So, you know, I started doing more of like the models that I had before were like, it was myself, family members, friends. Right. And then I'm like, I need more than that. Right. Mm. So I started looking at more of like, Chicago models mm. hired a few of them on there. Did you did you think about kind of the the models engagement or reach or no? I didn't know anything about that, dude. Nothing. Okay. That was bef- I'm telling you, it was like so much of learning, but like I didn't know anything. I'm like, all right, there's a model for this. Let's do it. So simply aesthetics, simply like Just, they're a great model. Yep, they would model the brand <laughs> really it. well. Yep, got gotcha. a photographer on there, dude. He had really really good work. I'm like, all right, let me get this guy then. Sure. So get that, dude. It's just like you know, just. Just like so much, like you. Well, look- this is it's how. What, what did you learn from outsourcing some of the work then? Um, definitely like the ins and outs, the ins and outs of things. So, it was a lot of like trial and error, a lot of um. Because you did it long enough to learn yeah. how difficult it can be, and yeah. then when you build a budget to start outsourcing oh, yeah, and and allow professionals to do their work, yeah, um, it shines. I think. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I got that. Then I got the models on the Instagram stuff and just um, opened the Shopify on there, mm-hmm. did that. And then the the sales came in and then like they were coming in pretty consistently, but very fair. Right. And most of the sales were coming in outside of Illinois. Mm. So then I'm like, I'm like, man, what's going on? You know, it's a Chicago based brand. Right. Like, why are these sales coming in from outside of Illinois? Mm-hmm. You know, so like. It didn't upset me, but it kind of did upset me a little bit. Why, man, dude? You want you want like, Chicago going hard for you? Yeah, dude. And it was like, man, I want. In, in a way, though, you got you got like I'm curious how these people found you. It's just like yeah, ha- me too. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> like I was curious too at this point too. But like most of the sh- sales were coming in California, Florida, Texas, New York, on a daily basis. So I was getting these sales coming out on a daily. Did basis. you ever figure out what who what the source was, dude? It was it was a, it was just a demographic on the ads that I was running. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Um, did you ever try to reach out like, hey, appreciate the support? Definitely. How did you find yeah. us? Or like, what did you like? What What do you like about this? Like yeah, about dude. blankness? They like, like the they like the definition of it and the mission oh, behind it. Yeah. Wow. They like the blank slate and they like the lack of ideas. And so in addition, <laughs> I like that. I like, I like that. Um, so in addition to the the tangible merch, um, did you start thinking about how else to cultivate a community or a brand then? At that point, yes, but then a no because it was like I still had the, the restaurant jobs. Oh, I couldn't go nowhere, ah, dude. Kind like, of like an anchor. Yes, I couldn't. I couldn't go to festivals. I couldn't go to the you know the spots in you're the still, city. You're a one man show, dude. I couldn't do any of that. What dude? if you had models going going to these festivals, dude? Who's gonna be there though? Like, but they might not speak as, as yeah, like, well I wanted or highly to be there. of the brand. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and it's like couldn't get a day then, off. And then and then I and then I had like uh, like people reach out like, dude, come. Come post your stuff here at, at the at this festival over here in, um, in the West Loop or even over here in Pilsen area or, you know, things like that. And I'm like, when is it? Saturday, Sunday? I'm like, dude, there's no way I can take Saturday, Sunday off, dude. So it's like, I, I do it. I hit brick walls, dude. Brick walls for like until like 2020, um, like April, COVID hit. And I'm like, all right, I'm done, dude. This is like, like, I don't even know what to expect at that point. It was just everything was already new for me. Mm. And I'm hitting all of these walls, and then that came in. Pandemic. And then, yeah, dude, it's just like, I'm like, all right, what do I do now? You know, I had just ordered, like, a fresh batch of new things. Mm. And um, So, at this point, are you, is it cut and sew? Uh, at this point, not yet. Still printing. Yeah. On, on higher quality material, Definitely right? higher quality material. Um, and uh, do you have storage space, or is this in your home? Dude, my garage was full of stuff. It was full of, like... Boxes <laughs> in the garage, boxes in the office, in the so house. So, meaning then, are you shipping? You're, yes. you're, you're physically. I'm doing you have everything, to dude. go to the post office. Yeah, and no drop shipping, dude. No you drop. Had the I wanted everything. Yeah, the labels. Be, I mean, if you had the time, handwritten notes. All, that that time when I had handwritten, yeah, that, that <laughs> at that time it was like something like that. But it was just like you mm-hmm. know, shipping everything 
the poly mailers, everything like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Man, dude, it was now. Now there's like personalized poly mailers. Yeah, like it's it's yep. a personal touch. Like yeah. like the packaging. Um, you know those boxes with like with like the magnets that kind of yeah. seal. Like man, just a little. Yeah, the aesthetic details. on there. Dude. So at that point, it's that right, and I thought for sure my brand was just gonna go downhill from that, and like it did the opposite of that. So COVID came, and sales just were like coming in more than what they were before that and and then i started paying more attention to like you know the stats on there and stuff and it's just like everyone's buying online mm. right mm. everyone's buying online um the brand the instagram brand's growing very heavy in terms of like the community of it behind it and what the meaning of the brand is yeah and especially in the pandemic everything was just like going in that direction with sure. the brand so it was like it kept going good dude i sold out needed more stuff sold out at this point i had i had designs already lined up for it right so mm. it's like it's not the same design it was always multiple designs so if i drop something it doesn't come back release again re-release or anything yeah. like that um so you know i did a few designs that year actually so i didn't i think i did like four drops that year and you know storage was like dude it was just my garage was full my house was full so i was just like i need more space for all of this all of these sure. different items and um, I wanted to release more different things. So I'm like, but I need the space for it. And this was when it came into play of like me kind of like brainstorming for what's next with this. What do I want to do with this? Right. And, you know, at this point, I'm still at the restaurant. Mm. You know, the restaurant was always there behind me. So, um, yeah. So I kind of just like was looking at like storefronts for which were originally was an e-commerce brand. I'm like, let me look at a storefront maybe, mm. or maybe look at, let me look at a warehouse. Right. Mm, so mm. I'm like, maybe I'll move to the city to a warehouse in the city, have everything there, shoot photography there. I was renting out spaces and venues for photography already. So I was wasting yeah. money on that already, mm. you know, and that got expensive. Um, so I was like, let me just get a warehouse and, um, just left that idea like that pretty much. And just, it was strictly e-commerce. Did you, well, did you see any places? I did went to go check out spots. Yep. I nice. went to go check out spots for warehouses over Just there. Not not in the budget at the time? Um, it was not the budget. It was I wasn't ready to like I need that Commit? needed my time. Yeah. So I needed I needed to quit the restaurant at that time. Oh man. Yeah, dude. I'm like, I couldn't run this and then run the restaurant. Because at that point my wife was pregnant with her second oh child, God. dude. <laughs> yeah, man. So it was like I couldn't I couldn't do that. I was like, I can't do this wow. right now. And it got it got more scary at that time because I got now I got two kids. Sure. You know, and um so, you know, it's, it's right in like the pandemic. I'm at Home Depot looking at like, because I build most of the stuff that I do the photography at, right? So most of the backdrops, most of the like um, pipes that I use for like to hang things, yeah. like, I built all of that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because you could buy that on Etsy, but yeah, like no, you made it. <laughs> I didn't, you know, yeah, I was like, I don't want the Etsy crap. I'm like, man, let me get, I want to do it my own stuff, right? So I would go to Home Depot and build all of that. I would get all the piping there and just like the fittings. Nice, and, nice. Um, so I did all that. I'm at Home Depot and I ran to one of my, my old friends, clients that I used to do their hair. And they're like, Serge, man, dude, what are you even doing here? You know, this is like years after. And I'm like, uh, and I'm like, I'm like, nah, dude, I'm looking for like, you know, potential like, you know, photography things. And he, I mean, he's like, how's everything, man? And I'm like, good. You know, I got, I got the kid and then I got one more on the way. So he's like, man, dude, I can't believe it. He's like, are you still doing hair? And I'm like, no, man, I'm like, like right now, just like, you know, family, dad, nephews, yeah. cousins, maybe myself. And he's like, oh, man, just I can't find like I can't find the same barber as like when I was with you. man. Wow. And I was like, man, I'm like, damn, dude, I'm like that. At that point, that meant something to me because I had already been through. Right. The anxiety, the depression, the jobs. Yeah. They didn't know any of that, you know. And I'm like, when someone said that, to me, I'm like, man, that meant something to me you now because I'm a little bit older I understand what that, you know, personable feeling is now, right? Mm. And I'm like, man, yeah, man. I'm like, dude, honestly, to tell you the truth, I don't even know how I would be able to cut your hair now. Because, like, I'm still at the restaurant. I come home, and I'm dealing with blankness. Mm. And then after that, you know, I mean, it's all with two, with the kids. So, like, mm, mm. you know what I mean? I'm not by myself. Yeah. So, I'm like, I'm like, he's like, what about... Would, would, would the kid be at the restaurant at all? No. Wow. The kids, the my daughter, she was like... Probably like two years old, three years old. Would would the kid be at the studio now? Um, currently, right now. I mean, I've, it's your own place, right? It's like yeah, it's, no, it's kind of what there. you want it to be. Yeah, 
they've been there. They're there now. They're at the restaurant too. So yeah, they, they go check it. Yeah, they go check I, it I think, out. and I think we talked about this before, but like, if there's a way to overlap several things, so like imagine cutting hair, and you're with someone who's just as creative and entrepreneurial as you, oh, and yeah. you can shoot the shit and think of more ideas. It's just yeah. like there's so much, and your kids in the background, like there's so much yeah. overlap. Yeah, dude, it was a lot of overlap. <laughs> It, it got, it got, so it got so the, the seed was replanted for potentially going back into hair? Yes, dude. That's okay. exactly when it got planted. I'm like, let me go home and I'll think if I can cut your hair during the week, dude. Okay. And he's like, all right. So went home. Dude, because at this point, I'm looking at storefronts. Wow. Literally with my real estate agent. I'm like looking at storefronts wow. and then I text him. I'm like, I'm like, hey, man, I think we need to adjust the listings, like just something different. You know? And he's like, what are you looking for? And I'm like, like maybe like like I want to do hair or something, you know? So I was, he's like, all right, so I'll check that out. Talk to my wife about it. And my wife was like, um, she's like, she was supportive. She's like, that's always been with you since wow. the beginning of it. And he, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, I, you know, I told a couple of people and a couple of people, those couple of people were like, oh man, I think you're just like, you're just doing new things and just trying new things. Not like, you know, I'm doing, you're bouncing from yeah. one thing to another. And I'm like, at that point, it was not really getting to me because I had already like. They don't know all the momentum. Exactly, that you've been dude. They didn't yeah. know anything of what I was building. Yeah. So I was like, I didn't care at that point. Before, mm-hmm. maybe before that, when I was at the engineering place and they said that, sure. I was like, I was taking it serious. I was like, yeah, you're right. Why do I have all these ideas and not really doing anything with them? You know. And then at, now at that point, I was like, you know what? I do want to do that. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to just kind of like build more of. Um, I'm like, all right, how do I get back into here? Sure. Right? So I'm, how do I build that back up? Did it, did it feel like riding a bike? Did it? Did, yeah, getting back, <laughs> it did. Getting so, back into it? So I text my nephew and, you know, I'm like, hey, can you come to the house like tomorrow or today? And he's like, yeah, why? I'm like, so I can give you a haircut. Oh. You know, and then he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Dude, I took like an hour and a, almost two hours on this haircut. Okay. Dude. Not when it, you know, not supposed to like, you know, I'll usually like 35, 45 an hour you know, max. Yeah. So like, it just, I was rough, dude. It was rough. That's fine. And you know, I texted a lot of my old friends and, and clients and I'm like, Hey, you know what? Like just different dude, styles of hair and different, yeah, different I'm like, shape, hey, hair, head I'm like, shapes. I'm like, Hey dude, if I come back into it, would you, you know, are you oh, down? looking for a potential yeah, client? Dude. I see. I'm like, I see. Can't open something without any absolutely, clients. Right. Absolutely. So they're like, they're like, Serge, dude, are you serious, man? Ooh, I'm like, yeah. Build, build night. <laughs> yeah. Dude. I'm like, all right, this is definitely it. <laughs> So I'm like, all right, this is definitely it for sure. Now the only obstacle is like I wanted to do more of um, – I'm like, how do I unite both of these things together, these mm. both businesses together? And I wanted to do more than just fade hair. Mm. I wanted more of like longer haircuts. Yeah, I noticed color, that. I noticed that, yeah. You know, and I'm like, I need to do something about that. So like I need to learn that aspect of it. Mm. And why, why did you want that? Dude, it was the unknown. I've, that, to, that's to, what gets me into my curiosity. To be all-inclusive? yeah. Okay. I want it. I want it. You didn't you know, want just the barbershop. You want correct. Okay. I didn't want the barbershop vibe. I wanted more of a like a studio vibe. Just what you think of a studio is like photography, the clothing, hair, people. That's it. Yeah. Not necessarily just fades. People fades. People. Like I wanted everybody to just show up there and pull up there and just like anyone. Yeah. You yeah. know that's that was my vibe from it. From it. Okay. And so I was like, but I. I got to do the long hair thing. And I'm like, I'm not really too sure of it, like at all. And I'm like, all right, now I got to look at schools for that type of specific, right? Um, more I, money, more time. Yeah, dude. And I'm like, you know, I looked up s- schools and went to go check up on a couple. And then I saw Paul Mitchell. I'm like, all right, let me check that out. I loved it. I went to go. Um, and prior to that, you've never had formal barber training no, or anything like that none of that it was just mainly myself were you, right were you nervous dude, were you was, humble like wow how did how, what was so your perspective? nervous beforehand yeah and then after my first day there dude i was like that was my zone dude wow because originally here's my been my thing forever yeah You've, it's just been in the background it's like a homecoming yeah dude this is like <laughs> that person that you're like you never thought would be that would have your back in school and then you, it, that was the one person. That's how hair was to me. Interesting. Like it was in the back seat. Yeah. You know, meanwhile, the engineer was in the front. I'm like, all right, you know, like swapping seats like that. And the yeah. hair has just been yeah. sticking around, like riding with me. It's a good fit. Felt- yeah, okay. dude. Okay. So then I'm like, the only obstacle at this point is like, how do I quit the restaurant to go into hair school full time? Mm. You know, and mm. that transition was huge. 
I think I started well, looking. Yeah, what was that conversation like? Oh, I mean, dude, just to, just to even tough, allow man. you to go back to school. What was that conversation like with your father-in-law? Man, dude, it was oh, dude, it was nerve-wracking, dude. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know how to say it. I I, I was like, man, I gotta tell him as soon as possible. That's right? a good. So that's January, a good idea. January, yeah. January, February came, mm. and you know, um, we hopped in a car together because I we needed to go do some like errands for the restaurant, mm. and I'm like, I was like, this is the time because I was I wasn't like, dude, I was getting nervous, dude. I was just like, man, you know, that was my first. It's gonna you know, hurt anxiety, regardless. Dude. Yeah. And I'm like, look, I'm like, look, little Fredo, I'm like, I gotta like, I gotta, I gotta do something else, and I'm, I gotta go back to school. And he's like, oh, why? I'm like, I, I want to open my own, um, like, at that time I was like, I want to open my own like salon, like you know, sure. barbershop. And he's like, and he's like, okay, sir. He's like, that's fine. He's like, I'll support you with that. He's like, do your thing. What a relief. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, dude, the years of like, Victor, the years of like. You know, all the anxiety in the restaurant, you know, dealing with everything, growth, right? And I'm like, to like now be in the exit side of it. And I'm like, man. You're, you're accepted. You're dude, validated. Yeah, you're dude. supported. I'm like, dude, this is it. And I'm like, he's like, when do you leave? I'm like, till August. So I gave him a huge, like, you know, a lot of months actually, but it was just like, I didn't want to be that guy, right? So it's family business and all that, right? It, so, you, oh, okay. So from like January, February to August, you were working with him. Yep. And then it's the school started in August. Yep. School nice. started in August. Yep. School started in August, got the orientation day, and I'm in like, this is like, dude, I'm like, I think I was like around like 28, and I'm like, this feels like high school, dude. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you know, I have two kids already, I'm in school. Like, What was that? the average age? Oh, they're like... Or I guess average maturity, right? It's just yeah, like... I mean, maturity, I was like... <laughs> the age, I think, was like around like, you know, 19, like 23. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I'm like, oh my, damn, I can't believe I'm here. Dude. Like, what am I doing here? You know, and um, the whole like perspective of school was like, I'm like, man, I don't know how to even deal with this. Then we get into the classroom, you know, they start telling us how to, the school stuff, the, the hair stuff works, the whole background of it. Dude, I instantly fell in love with it, man. Nice. Instantly. Because yeah. that was my thing. I, I, I've never spoken with someone that went to Paul Mitchell, so it's really yeah, dude, nice oh, to hear man, that. Dude, I loved it, dude. It nice. was like the complete opposite of me learning how to fade. Oh, okay. So it was like okay. the complete opposite of that. And then they picked up on like, Sergio, have you cut hair, you know, before? And I'm like, yeah. They're like, yeah, we can tell like, you know, you're fading. Your fadings are pretty, you know, they're pretty good. And I'm like, no, I mean like, you know what? I've been, um, I was doing it beforehand. You know, it just was never a thing until now. Mm. And they're like, cool. They're like, you know, what are your plans? They're like, do you want to go work at a barbershop or a salon mm -hmm. or like, and I'm like, honestly, I want to, I want to open my own thing, you know? And then that's my whole thing from it right yeah. like my whole goal was like that's on my timeline i need right. to come here graduate open my thing that's my did, thing did you meet anyone that didn't have that desire yeah really yeah, so people dude. do have the desire to just kind of go into oh, someone yeah. else's like kind of shop and do yeah. their oh i didn't know okay yeah dude it's like um you know a lot of times that's what they're looking for after school right they want like a mentor or well, I guess long term goal though. Long term goal, like uh, long term goal. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't meet some people that, that are just are, are okay yeah. with that. Just being part of a an already established for sure culture and community. Yeah, okay. That's when I realize a lot of times, like you know, more of like I'm learning about people. Like, oh, yeah. there's different. You know, people want different things, and sure. that's okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, yeah, dude, I got um, you know, met a lot of wonderful people at Paul Mitchell. Mm. Um, a lot of them helped me out throughout the whole career while I was there. What was the student to instructor ratio? Um, I think when I was there, so in terms of the barbering side of it, mm. was we had a couple teachers, and it was like maybe not more than ten barbers. To cosmetologists on the other teacher. hand, two teachers, oh. and then yeah, that's, like, not, that's good. Yeah, that's that's good. Like really good learning, and then like cosmetology was a little bit more. They had a little bit more teachers, but like. A little bit more students. Though, okay. But, okay. Um, yep. It was because there's a separate like outside of Paul Mitchell barber schools. Right? Yeah. So currently there is no more barbering. Yeah, dude. Paul Mitchell is just strictly cosmetology. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So okay. So the the Paul Mitchell in by UIC. Yes. Is strictly cosmetology and it's always been cosmetology. I see. The one in Yorktown. That's one I went to in Lombard. That's bar that was barbering and cosmetology. Wow. Yeah. So I've done. Um, so. You know, so, fast. wow, what did you pick up in the barber side that you might have Dude, a lot, dude. No. So, you know, this is what goes back into like, oh, I'm confident in my barbering sure, side. I don't sure. need to learn from any teachers, dude. A lot of the, all the teachers that were there at the barbering learned so much, dude. You would think that you're not going to learn, but that's the like closed-minded of person, right, right? Right, 
I went in there with like a little bit more of like I'm like I think I got everything locked down, and then no, dude, it was like I learned so much from it. Which thankful for for this day for like all my instructors that were in barbering. Come on, man! Like they like I've learned so much in terms of like even cutting wise, yeah, fading wise. You pick up on so many different things. That's how we learn, right? Right. If I'm stuck to like I'm not gonna learn anything at all, like then you won't. Then I won't grow, right? Yeah. So uh, picked up so much stuff there, and then so kind of like. Four months before I graduate, I started looking at, at um, retail spots now. Mm. So I'm still looking at it, but not like I'm like, I'm ready to sign. Now I'm like ready to sign something. Mm. So, um, you know, originally was looking in like Oak Brook area, wow. Elmhurst area, okay, and some in the city area, okay. but not really in the city. I just wanted to see what was out there. And so check out a couple spots in Oak Brook, a couple in downtown Elmhurst. Nice. And I'm like, all right, man, I'm like, I kind of... I don't know. Let me see. Let me look around more. I really like this one spot. It had like a balcony and all like huge doors open. I'm like, this is it, dude. And they're like, no hair salons. They like cause yeah. the owners explicitly said no yeah, hair salons. Yeah, no hair salons. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, cool, whatever then. But I really do that spot was like, it was like a second floor, but like with like, you know, balcony kind of thing. Yeah. The doors opened up. Imagine the wind just in. It was mm-hmm. like a whole vibe. And he's like, yeah, no, no hair salons. Did they no say why? Shops. No, they didn't. <laughs> I was going to build out the whole like, place in there and they just didn't, they didn't want to. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So then I got another spot um, in Elmhurst, so where I'm currently at right now. And um, went in there, it was a martial arts space before. Wow. So it was bare bones in there. Just Did you, did you uh, fathom the cost of a build out? Yes. Where did, um, what did you have to do to realize what a build out might cost? Um, that came a lot from when I went to school and the engineering and the construction. <laughs> artists, they were that, oh all my the God. In there, <laughs> So I kind of knew what the base was of everything from there okay. and the estimating on everything. And the and, contract... And that was attainable. Yeah. The, That's the, amazing. The, the contract and all of that, contractors and all that stuff. I mean, I went to school for this. Like, that was so like... So you, ha- you have a network of, of yes. general contractors. Yeah, already. dude. Wow. Yeah, at that point, it was just like... Um, that was always a maze for me coming back from like childhood memories of my parents mm. with the home Flipping stuff. Homes. Yeah. So that was like, you know, it's always been there too. Like, you know, so I got the spot... And I'm like, my build out was very simple. You probably, you walk in there, there's literally just, I edit one wall in there. It looks very open. Yep. Very yeah. open, minimalistic. Yeah. Um, that was the whole concept of it. Is there know. a photo studio in there? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. So like everything's, every, everything in there is removable and it's just, you know, backdrops, yeah. photography, everything. You can do anything in there, dude. Um, so that was the whole concept of that. Um, got this, got the lease while I was still in school. Did you ever look for places in Chicago at that time? When you were ready to sign? Not to, like, I did see him online, but not, not in person. Because, like, I, I can tell that you, you have this love for the city. Yeah. Um, and so I was wondering if you, if, and maybe it still is, like, a, it still a is, desire though. to come to the city. No, it definitely still is, man. It's just, like, this is where it created most of my ideas from, though, mm. was the city. The only reason I did it, it's just, like, I got the house in the suburbs. I got the kids. The commute. The commute, dude. It's mm. extremely hard, dude. With, like, if, if anything right now that I'm doing is already hard... Just with the three kids that I got now, dude, it's just like, mm, yeah, you know, it's just like, you know, it just adds a lot more to the plate. It, but it, was there a sense of like FOMO for like maybe the, the, oh, yeah. the things that are happening in the city that aren't in the suburbs? Yeah, dude. Okay. Mm. I could never catch the vibe from the city, but like if you go in the studio, you'll, you'll feel the vibe in there for sure. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. The vibe's there for sure. Do, um, at, at this point, do your clients... Uh, do they all mainly come from Elmhurst or do they come from the city sometimes? No, you know what? I got I got clients from the city. Yeah? Yeah, oh, okay. dude. I got clients from the city. I got clients from like Carpentersville. Okay. I got yeah. clients from like Elmhurst, that whole area there. But like, yeah, some of them are commuting like 45 minutes away, dude. <laughs> that's love. Yeah, man. That's real <laughs> love, dude. And so like, you know, it just, it makes it a whole like, it just makes it a whole lot better, dude. So it's like, I start my days pretty early there, at, like right. 7 a.m. Right. Get out there pretty, not too late, like 2 or 3 p.m., so, so what's the, the timeline between, um, building out the studio and yes. now how much time has passed? Um, two and a half years. Okay. Um, in the bio, you say you rent chairs. Um, yes. are you still a one man show? And there's a local shop, um, Barker's, uh, near here that, um, they rent the chairs and then just 
probably the the shop takes a small percentage of it yeah um but it's like mainly appointment only um yeah they do do walk-ins but like they really prefer that you don't um and uh all all solid people and similar yeah. to fernwood it's just like they their bookings book up yeah. real fast so for you um do you guys have do you have a solid team or is it just kind of contractors and they all rent the chair by the so- chair yeah, it's a little bit of both. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a little bit of hybrid for like renting chairs and commission. Okay. So okay. got a little hybrid system going on there. Yeah. It's what, myself. What's... Myself, like I'm just running on appointments only. Yeah. And the studio itself runs on appointments only. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What What seems to be working? I mean, it, maybe the hybrid oh, model is working, but like, is it easier or is it dependent on the individual person's kind of where they're at in life and their schedule? I think that's what it is. Dude. It goes back to the... It goes back to the original um, stylish slash barber. If they are mostly in the beginning stages of their career, they are definitely going to work a little differently than someone more advanced in their career. So someone mm. more, more advanced in their career are running on appointments. Mm. and Mm-mm. They have know, a base of clients. Yeah, dude, because okay. they're, they're okay. running on their own schedule. You know, they come and go as they go versus a commission. They're kind of just you know, they're growing to that level mm. if they want to grow to that level. Yeah. Like, you know how we're saying, like if they want to just, you know, stay with a salon or right. a barbershop. And they, they get a mentor out of yeah, it. Correct. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. man. Um, what's the, what's the process to like get on the team then? Is it kind of just like come shadow, come observe, come so, hang out with the crew? Yeah. So now it's kind of, uh, I, I, I want to say that right now it's a little bit more, they definitely have to see the vision behind it and the mission behind it more than what it really is right now. So, you know, blatantness as a, you know, a lot of people know it as just like an e-commerce brand now. Mm. So we get we get clients and they're like, wait, isn't this a clothing brand? And I'm like, yeah, that's that's how it started as a clothing brand, right? But like the mission behind it, it's just like, it means so much. Dude. You know, I will never be able to clone myself, but I just want someone to bring that same mission into the space and share it with and their have, clients. Have you found that? In your team yeah, or in your of peers people. of like people that embody the similar same yeah, for mission, sure. okay, yeah, that's a good not, feeling. You know, not not everyone is going to have that same mission, and like, you know, that's okay too, though. You know, mm. like it's not always going to be for everyone, right? But um, you know, at the same time though, that like just by them sharing it and me sharing that space whenever they were there, right. that, that's awesome too. How how hard was it for you to share the space even when you're not there? Oh, that's. Yeah, it's, it's tough, cool now, dude. but like, yeah. I mean, when you first when you first yeah, started, it it's like, tough, this is my dude. baby. Yeah, dude, it, it's it's tough, dude. <laughs> I get a lot of people that are come and ask, and like, hey, do you want to like take over the social media? I'm like, I'm like, I don't know about that, dude. Even a manager in there, like, I don't know if I would want to do something like that right now because yeah. it's not like, I don't know. That's 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 my well, it, in the hair industry, it's like it's it's a it's very easy to be um, a cash only business. Yeah. Um, but it's all it's also easy to you know not share all the cuts you yeah, did dude. for for the day yeah man so it's interesting how someone operates uh their business yeah um but uh what are you, what what plans do you have in 2024 for the studio and the brand is blankness like i see i see pop-ups in your future i, I see events uh happening yeah. you know imagine imagine it was so hyped that people come from the city to listen to music or yeah. try like let's say there was a food vendor inside blankness yeah. whatever it is like yeah. what kind of like do you have any plans for 2024 yeah i definitely want to do a lot more collabs yeah. i want to do a collabs with the uh, you know local restaurants local artists right um just bringing a different variety of different things going in there you mm-hmm. know because at the same time that blankness is that's what it is a lack of ideas so i want the complete opposite of that i want different aspects different industries in there you know just a whole like um I want people to share it and I want the message to be shared with each other on that mm-hmm. versus just like, Oh, I just, I want to just come into bling they got cool stuff in there. Mm. You know what I mean? I want the mission to be more than that. I want you to share that with people and, sh- and know the, what the, when you walk in there, the vibe that what it has, it just, you know, outside of this. So it's, so 2024, man, yeah. I, I mean, I want more of, um, definitely a lot more events. Um, if you were, if you were to design your dream event, um, what are some vendors that you would like to include at the event? Definitely Carnitas on Alfredo for sure. Hey. <laughs> you know Has that mean? not happened yet? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen this summer. <laughs> okay. It'll happen this summer for sure. Okay, so we, we got a, we got yeah, food taken yeah, care of. Yeah, we got we did a cards and coffee about like two years ago when I oh, opened sick, it. Okay. That was sick, dude. Okay. Yeah. I got a lot of um 
a lot of people in the in the car industry there that are heavily in there. So we, oh, very cool. yeah, we do that. Um, I mean, anybody that wants to like you know collab, you know, let me know. I got I got a couple restaurants in. One of my favorite breweries is in downtown downtown uh, Elmhurst. Uh, okay. Phase three. Okay, nice. They just opened up. They're originally from lake zurich and then their second location is in elmers it's, nice. that's a nice little little town you yeah, got there dude. it's not yeah. too far from the city it's not too far from the city at all dude. <laughs> the, the, the commute's not too bad no you're heading west so it's it's not it's not terrible yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah no i mean anyone that wants to reach out though that's definitely in the, in the works man that's fun yeah, yeah collaboration makes the world go around exactly um so t- tell me um I, I you know maybe we'll get don alfredo on one day yeah, but man. like what like just from a few posts that I kind of um, scrolled through, it's like I you can kind of feel his love for for the food. Oh yeah, um, and it was passed down from a family recipe as yep. well. And and um, your mother in law, his wife, uh, yep. ha- had a lot of, of, of to do with it as yep. well. Correct. Um, I guess what have you what have you learned about the importance of like a family business, dude? It's 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 a tough business just based on family. Yeah, but at the same time, it's it's all love. You had you gotta have love for it. Mm-hmm. If the love is not there, the food's not there. Dude. Yeah, that's the number one thing that like you know because that question I'll get that question because I went back into you know fast forward to right now, I'm back at the restaurant mm. because it's it's almost like the the restaurant and the hair they're in the back seat they're they're always riding with me. Mm. You know mm. what I mean? So that's always that's always that's that's Sergio. That's what it is. Mm. Restaurant and hair. Yeah, because it's it's a people thing. I love being with people. I love talking. I love socializing with them. Mm, it's mm. something that it's always going to be there for me. Mm. So like, yeah, the love has to be there for sure. Mm. And that when you walk into Carnitas, like that that love's there, dude. Um, did they expand? Do they have three or four locations? So they have three locations. So is North Lake not part of it? North Lake is um, it's it's still family from like the another owner. Okay. So yeah, it's all. Family owned and operated. Yeah, because one website shared three locations, and there was a separate North Lake yeah. website. Um, but uh, did they expand before or after you came on board? Um, the expanding. Okay, so when I got on board originally, there were three restaurants, and then once I, you know, left and did my whole thing and went to the hair stuff, then the other owners expanded to more restaurants. Yeah. Then my father-in-law got another restaurant in Bensonville. So yeah, dude, it's just been a you know, slowly expanding, but it just, it's like, we, we got to keep the love like close. Yeah. And how do you, the, how do you keep, how do you maintain consistency? Dude, Cause it, they can't be at yeah, everywhere at the same be. time. Right. Exactly. It's just like, you got to share that same mission. It, it goes right. back to the same mission of the original mission on there. Um, have they shared any advice or has, has any other, um, like immigrants that, want to that might be maybe let's say a street vendor yeah. um that ha- have has dreams of opening up a brick and mortar um if what advice do you think your in-laws would give to them they're just like hard work pays off that's one of the number one thing my father-in-law will tell you like hard work will pay off it'll outwork anything else the, it, I, it's more than hard work though because yeah. there's plenty of hard workers out there yeah um you know, you know, there's you know, got to be a lot of luck for sure, but like, how so, do you put yourself in a situation where luck finds you? You know what it is? It's asking questions to people and not being afraid to ask something, right? Because a lot of times, like, you might have everything going perfect for you, but if I'm if I'm not asking you anything, Victor, then how would anyone know about me, mm-hmm. right? It's like if I'm a street vendor or anything, like you know, like you know, I'm pretty sure you you're gonna some of the best tamales are yeah, down the street, right? Dude. So, yeah. but like, I don't know if they have dreams of opening up. A brick and mortar. Some people and, might not have the dreams though. That's true. Right? And then some people love what they're doing right now. Yeah. Because like, you know, it's like, it's almost like, I've, I've thought about that though. Like, I've thought about that. And it goes back to, I guess, like my point of view, it is like, if I have to do hair, I could do hair in a small basement closet or room and love what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, just like a street vendor could be, you know, doing their thing too like that. Or they might have ambitions to like, hey, one day I want to open a restaurant like me. One day I want to open a barbershop or a mm-hmm. salon. I think it's the same thing, but it's just like definitely like it has to have like that that hard work's already going to be there, right? Yeah. And then like the luck's going to be there. A little bit of everything. All of these things have to line up and just kind of like flow there. And it's it's tough, dude. It's tough. And and now that you're at the level that you're at, what um, 
has it afforded you and, and maybe what opportunities have come your way? Um, because, you know, you could be just cutting hair in a closet, but like yeah. now that you're in your own space, um, you can provide for your family. Yeah. I'm guessing. Right. And, and more, it's like um, an extra, it's an, it's just like, it just bumps that extra thing for it. Right. Cause yeah. if it's, if you're already doing what you love and it's just providing for the family at the same time, like that just, I might do this is like double love right here. Right. 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 Yeah, Donald Fredo coming up on twenty years soon, right? Yeah, dude, coming up That's on twenty awesome. years. Dude. That's so cool. Yeah, he a uh, little backstory on him. Yeah, he started like ground up, dude. Just just like had three jobs at one point. You know, most of his life was just like you know that type of you know thing, like that type of job scenario and stuff. Um, then he just started, you know, like asking people like, hey, you know what, I do carnitas, mm. you know, and then they got him for catering stuff like that, and mm. then. Eventually, they led into that restaurant and then went from there. To I wonder if he considered like a food truck before brick and mortar. You know what? I'm not sure about that. Yeah. That's a good question to ask, though. Um, like there's there's steps to it, right? Yeah, you know, definitely. Without making sure. the, the leap into to brick and mortar. Yeah, we got to bring um, him on here. But for for you know an immigrant who's who who doesn't speak English as a native language. You know, it's even tough for someone who does speak English as a native language to navigate taxes and creating an LLC and and all that stuff. It's like so so much respect. Dude, that's a tough part about it, dude. It's just like, you know, if if it's already tough for me trying to find information to like register something. And and, uh, yeah, lots of people willing to take advantage of of people, right? Yeah, that's one of them. And then but at the same time, like you got to have like that support system from, Mm -hmm. you know, like going back to the original question, what it is like, you got to have a support system, dude. Mm -hmm. That's that's what helped me helps a lot of people too. Yeah. You know, not just like money wise, but like support with love, hearing someone just, you know, just listening to someone speak, right? That's that's a huge thing. Yeah, it was really nice to hear um, your your father in law allow you to come and go and be supportive in the way yeah, he no. was because typically in family businesses you're you're kind of thrust into the family business uh, yeah. sometimes without a choice yeah. um, and maybe you come to love it um, but uh, it's it's always interesting to hear if there are any unrealized dreams for sure. Um, should we move on to donuts? Like, tell me about the yeah. donuts. So the donuts came on from, look, so the donuts have been a family recipe from my mom's side. Oh, wow. And so my mom does, um, you know, just everything by hand, dude. Everything from scratch, literally. Everything's oh. from scratch. And, um, yep, the, I mean, the recipe's there. You know, I can't really speak too much about that. Are these, like, like Mexican donuts or, like, like Amer- yeah, they're American Mexican donuts? donuts oh, wow. Yeah, they're Mexican donuts. And I started with that idea as, like, one of my ideas when I was at the restaurant still and I wanted to bring that idea to life because I wanted my mom's recipe out there. And, you know, it goes back to like, if my mom was a street vendor, Mm. she would, you know, most likely, I don't know if she would be able to be like, Hey, how do I open a storefront like this? Or Mm. how do I even get Mm. these donuts out here? Mm -hmm. You know, the researcher were not there. Right. So it's like, that's what goes into like, it needs a researcher. I'm like, mom, I want to bring this out. Like, I want to do this. Like I have a love for food. So it's like, how can I do this? Right. So it's like, you know, the, the recipe was already kind of like passed down to me. Mm. And, um, so yeah, like I'll, that's one of my plans in the future to bring out pop-ups at the, at Blinkness for donuts. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's one of the, that's one of the things I got to go in there. Very cool. Yeah. We just, I just had Kevin yeah, Leon uh, from Gurney Donuts yeah, and, uh, yeah, I saw that. and he's got a cult following people yeah, come dude. all the way from the city to go to the North shore to, to yeah. snack some donuts. Dude, man, that, like you, <laughs> you know, I love going to LA and like you go to LA, do the donuts out there, man, dude, they're like, you know, you go to each block and there's a donut shop everywhere. Mm. The love's there. It's definitely there for donuts. So even Hawaii, Malasada's in Hawaii. Okay. Those are fire too. So uh, that's very cool. Um, Is there anything else that we haven't, haven't shared or talked about that you, that's been on your mind? Yeah. I think we hit everything on there, dude. A little bit of... (laughs) That's that's all about everything that I got right there. Yeah, from. yeah. I mean, some some t- takeaways is to kind of just zone in on your dreams and exactly and take criticism and opinions with a grain of salt. I think yep. I think people, no matter what it is, whether it's support or criticism, try to have your best interests in mind. Um, at the end of the day, no one knows you like you. Yeah. Um, so you got to just keep pushing if it's something you really want. Um, I know in this class, in my EMT class, um, 
we we start with let's say 100 students but we usually end with like 60 something students yep. um and i try to be as transparent about the amount of work it takes but unfortunately um things happen so it could be like misfortune and uh, and bad luck um but some students don't need this emt license some just want it i've heard it been ca- be called a nice to have it'd be nice to be a barber it, it'll right. be nice to have a studio right. um but you're not hungry enough you don't need this um and so you don't put the effort that it takes to realize um these dreams yeah and so it's if you want it enough i think you'll do anything it takes to at least see it through and if it fails it fails but regardless like the studio that you have right now like how on par like your life right now not your not just studio but your life how on par was it with your original dream right i mean dude that's like it's 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 changed so much that's the point that like right? dude it like if you would have told me this before like two years ago yeah damn last year ago last year dude it's like it's changed so much right the perspective on it it's still the same with the same mission but the values get added on some take off you know you add things and you go as you go right but that's that's the beautiful thing about that though that like sometimes like in the beginning stages of entrepreneurship you want you know red black white colors like everything so perfect right it's just about getting started though just you just gotta get started that's the number one thing because that's going to be forever. It took me forever to get out of that stage of like wanting to perfect the same thing over and over and over again without just even starting the thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's just like because you don't want to like – I guess it's that comfort feeling too. But like once you get started, then you add as you go. You take off. You add more. You're like, hey, I want to change this. I want to change that. Yeah. But the original core foundation is always got to be the same. Right? Yeah. So it's like that the value of like – right right of what it means yeah yeah i mean most people are are more motivated by fear um but if you're not you know i want you to try to be as concrete with your vision of what you want out of this this dream um but if you are fear-based then you know think about what would happen to your life if you never pursue this you know take this leap of faith and pursue your dream um and let that push you towards your dream you know? you know, and then that's like a very common thing in entrepreneur. I don't know if it's talked about that much, but like, um, definitely like a lot of fears and like mm. regrets in your own mind of like, should I even be doing this right now? Yeah, right. So that's hit a lot of times. That's like very common, and it's just like, um, you know, I, I think you, I think you get hit with that on a daily basis. I'm like, man, why, why am I doing this? What's the purpose of this? Mm. Right. And the same, the main purpose of it is like, would I be happy working myself? a nine to five Sergio, I'll ask myself that. And I'm like, no. So it's like, that's what it means down to. So whatever yeah. I have going on that day, if it's so much things going on and I go back to my family at the end of the day and mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I had a rough day at the end of the time. I'm always going to be happier than if I had to go somewhere that I didn't want to be personally. at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 100%. You see, so that's how, that's how I get rid of like the daily struggles of, that entrepreneurial, it's like they're gonna be ups and downs every single day, mm-hmm. right? But those at the end of the day, it's like it's something that I I'm love to do, right? Something that I'm working for it versus like me something that I like before ten years ago that I didn't love when I was yeah. There. So I mean, for those of you that are trying to start a, start a side hustle, don't don't start it because of the prospect of making a quick buck. It's, yeah, it's more because that's not gonna help you persevere through the hard times. Because right. no matter what you do, it's always gonna feel like. There, it will, there will be a time where it will feel like a lot of work. Uh, if anything, you're on call 24 hours of the day. Yeah. Um, so if you start with what you get joy in, um, that'll help you persevere. For sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, it was a pretty good conversation. Yeah, dude, it was a really good talk, dude. <laughs> where, where can uh, people find you if you want to be found? So they can find me on uh, Instagram at uh, Worldwide Sergio. That's my personal. Okay my hair page my personal i kind of put everything in one page there sure sure um the studio page is blinking studios all together and the restaurant page is carnitas on alfredo underscore original yeah so right yeah dude, that's where they'll find me at awesome appreciate the time sergio yeah um everyone else thanks for tuning in yeah for sure um, stay curious we'll see you in the next one yep see you guys <laughs>